If you're thinking of getting a graphics card to do some number crunching, then the only number you should really be looking at is the peak number of floating point operations per second that a card can do. And this is typically separated into calculations for single and double precision variables. So be sure to check the right data type because on some cards the difference is very significant. Please note that if you're not interested in floating point calculations, or for example you need to do some integer based calculations because you want to do some Bitcoin mining for example, then then you might want to look at ATI cards instead of NVIDIA ones. And in this course, I'm generally making the assumption that we're interested in floating point calculations. Now, to make comparisons easy, NVIDIA gives you tables listing various parameters on each card. So in addition to just the raw computational prowess of a card, you can also find out about the number of GPUs that's on the card, the compute capability or architecture of the card, uh, the amount of memory that's available to each GPU, and so on. There's actually lots of parameters to look at. And when looking at the cards, you'll find uh, different types of products. You'll find cheaper commercial of the shelf cards that gamers would typically buy. And you would also find uh, workstation cards. These are kind of the the more powerful GPUs that also have a display output. And then there are dedicated computational products like the Tesla architecture, the ones that don't even have a display output. Now, whichever card you get, make sure that your power supply unit is actually powerful enough and has the right connectors to handle the card that you want to get. And you'll also need the right slot in the motherboard. And this can be a problem both in terms of available slots obviously as well as simply the space in your case and since powerful graphics cards they can quite often get very big. Oh and keep in mind that strictly speaking you can get more than one graphics card to do your computations provided of course that your PSU supports it and you've got enough space. However depending on the task at hand the usefulness of adding additional cards may decline because after all if you keep using all those cards sending data to and from you'll end up saturating the PCI bus that these cards are connected to and you will thereby lose some of the computational advantage due to a simple bottleneck. And finally, I'd like to mention that at least on the latest versions of Windows, you can mix different architectures. And this means that you can have both an NVIDIA and an ATI card in the same machine attached to the same motherboard.